welcome. Thank you for watching. This is an hour of revelation, illumination, encouragement for all of God's people in these critical times we're living in. Stay with me because I'm going to share with you some mysteries that has been given to me by the Spirit of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and He died on the cross of Calvary. He rose again on the third day. He ascended to the right hand of God. Whence He shall come back to take us home, the, the saints, the elect of the Father. This is why it's so important to know that God has got a plan, a future plan. That future plan is revealed in Scripture, in prophecy. That's how we know the future. Because our Father wants us to be prepared for the future, He reveals to us the future. I want you to stay with me. First of all, I want to thank all of you who prayed for me. The devil has been attacking me. I, I still have another operation to redo my eye. Uh, on Thursday, and he's attacking our finances, he's attacking everything, but God, but God. You know why I say but God? Because he always leads us in triumph. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. All things work for the good of them that love God, that are called according to his purpose. That means everything that's happening is wonderful in the sense that I already know that for every test, there is a testimony. You cannot have a testimony without a test. So I've been through the testimony. In other words, I already have the testimony. God is already healing me, and God is already meeting all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now I want to thank those who prayed for us, my wife and I, Janet, and our kids. We, we just appreciate you so much. The, the remnant, the, the, those who care, those who stand with us and pray for us. You know, God still answers prayer. There's power when we pray. So uh, keep praying, keep standing on our behalf in, the, in that spiritual place of warfare and intercession because we need that. God is moving mightily in my life. There is a, there is a fresh anointing, a fresh revelation, and uh, just a heart for God and a passion for God to do more. To say, it's time to press deeper. It's time to do more for the glory of the Father because time is running out. The King is coming soon and very soon we'll see the King. And he keeps telling me, prepare my people. Prepare my people. Declare the things that I've revealed to you to my people and prepare them for not for the warfare and the Antichrist and the, you know, the, the great tribulation and all those things. No, we are preparing to meet the king. I am a preacher of good news. I preach Christ crucified and him risen. I preach of the coming of a blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the blessed hope. That's what I preach. You know, we, 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 we have to, to, to be honest because people... Stop it. Well, you talk about the, 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 the wars and rumors of wars and the, the things that are coming. and you, you scare us. No, I excite you. Because these are signs of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you should be excited. Because it's saying we're going home. The king is coming. We're almost home. Our homecoming is it's nearer than ever before. That is why all of God's children all over the world... This is time to begin the celebration. There is music in the air. The King, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, His Majesty, the King of Glory, is coming for us. A church without spot, without wrinkle. That's why we are not concerned of all the things that are happening all around us. Because everything that's happening today is showing us that the Lord Jesus is coming back. Because there is a convergence between world events and prophecy, biblical prophecy. The predictions that were given concerning our future. That future that were pro predicted, that future that was foretold is happening right now. We are in the happening right now all around us. Signs of the times are happening. Earthquakes, signs in the heavens, wars and rumors of wars. We are indeed...
at the end of time. Because we are living such an incredible time in history, an awesome time in history, the question is, can we fully understand these things? How do we know that we know that we know that these are the, the days that the Bible talks about? We are given signs to look for to confirm the biblical timeline that was given to Daniel. And the biblical timeline that was given to Daniel puts us right now in the seventh, 70th week of Daniel, puts us at the very end of the times of the Gentiles. It puts us right now at the beginning of the final uh, seven years before the coming of the Lord. I said before the coming of the Lord. It's coming back very soon in our days, in this generation. We are the terminal generation. We are the final generation. We are in the final decade, the decade of the return of the King of Kings. That is why it's time to be about the Father's business. It's time to forget the things that lies behind and press towards the mark of the high calling of God. Because the time that we're living in is the time that the prophets of old spoke about. When all the things that we're seeing are happening, they predicted them, they foretold all these things. The pathways of, of the future were given in the Old Testament, 2,700 years ago. We know what's happening because it was written for us to warn us, to prepare us, to equip us that we will live in these last days. May be anxious for nothing, but in everything give thanks to the Lord. For we know that all things are working out for our good in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the crisis. We know that Christ is with us and for us and through us and that we have been found worthy to live in such an hour, to be called into the kingdom for such a time as this. It is a privilege to live to see the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. I was watching the Olympics like everyone, most of the people, uh, a great world event. And... Uh, The opening ceremony was so evil, abominable, wicked, satanic, demonic, that I was stirred up to pray. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon me to give me interpretation and understanding of what was going on. Things that I had not known before. The Holy Spirit came upon me because... When my heart was stirred up, I went into prayer and immediately the Spirit of God came upon me to interpret the mystery of the end of time in the Olympics. That's what I'm going to do. These are things that have never been preached, things that have not been revealed, that God is revealing in these last days. I want you to, to stay with me. As we go through the mysteries that have been hidden through the ages, as we unfold and as we peel back and as we pull the, pet, the curtains back so that we see where we are and where we are going and what God is doing. Because God's at work in the midst of, the, of this horrible rejection of righteousness and holiness, rejection of Christ. I mean, just the desecration of the... Holy Communion, or the, the Lord's Supper, or the Last Supper. It, you know, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Because he is, this, he is the Lord, the Creator, He will judge. There is a day of reckoning. There is a judgment coming. We as the people of God must pray for forgiveness, pray for the eyes of the people to be opened, that they may flee the, the wrath of God that's coming. There is, there is still time to pray for everyone. It's the spirit of deception, it's the spirit of Satan that's taking over the world, and we, the people of God, have a responsibility. The church is at sleep during this crisis hour. We're asleep at the wheel. We need to awaken the, 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 the sleeping giant. We need to awaken the church. We need to awaken the saints. We need, we need to return. 
to the altar, a place of brokenness, humility, intercession. I'm talking about with groanings that cannot be uttered. I'm talking of reverational intercession on behalf of our generation, that they may be a release of the Spirit of God without measure upon the remnant across the world, that there will be an army of a mighty people of God raised up for such a time as this, because indeed God is doing it, and God wants us to be part of this glorious event. I'm talking about the revival in the midst of the rejection of the cross of Jesus Christ, in the face of all the, the, the blasphemy that's going on, that we will know our God, know that these are signs of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's time to get excited. It's time to get prayed up. It's time to get filled up because we know what time it is. In the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 10, talking about the days we're living in, the days that you and me, the remnant, have been gathered unto him. We've been called out, the ecclesia, called out from among the nations to be a separate people, a holy people, in the midst of a dying generation. Great darkness has covered our earth, the earth. I, I, I see it everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's wickedness. There is rebellion against God. There is... A, a repudiation of the Ten Commandments, the rejection of the Ten Commandments. The laws of God are being thrown out. There is no more moral standard. It's now situational ethics. It feels good. Go ahead and do it as long as you don't harm anybody. Whatever feels good, it's good for you. Well, the Bible doesn't say that. But that's the world we are living in. And we're living in a time of Social gospel. When I say social gospel, I'm actually talking about a cheap grace that allows people to live in sin and makes them feel good living in sin. There's no more holiness preaching to call the people to separation unto God, to live a holy life because holy is the Lord God. Without holiness, no man can see God. As I was in prayer, the Lord began to move upon my heart because I said, God, it is time to reveal to us these things that I may be able to share with the remnant that wants to know what's happening. And he took me first to Daniel chapter 12, verse 10. Many shall be purified, that's a remnant, and made white, holy, and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly in these last days. Look around. The wicked will do wickedly. In these last days. And none of the wicked shall understand. They don't understand the profanity of the opening ceremony of the Olympics. They don't understand it. They don't understand that this is blasphemy against the living God, that Jesus was in the Son of God, and is the coming King of Kings. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, that through his death, burial, and resurrection, we've been redeemed by his blood. We've been made holy unto the Lord. We have been purchased from the eternal damnation in the lake of fire through the blood of Jesus. The Holy Communion, that sweet, sweet communion that we have, with him through the blood of Jesus, redeemed by the blood, washed by the blood, sanctified by the blood, covered by the blood, protected by the blood. We know who we are. The world will not influence us. We will not be discouraged. We are focused on him and him alone. We know we are in the world, but not of the world. Therefore, we need to understand the, the depth of what's going on. We need to understand what is it? Why, why is it happening? What is the Olympics? What does it mean? That's what happened when I watched that. The Spirit of God came upon me to begin to give me discernment because the wise will understand. There will be an understanding given to those who are wise. What is wisdom? The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. When things are happening all around you, you don't need to analyze them. 
You need to pray about everything because there's a deeper meaning and there is a, 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 an invisible enemy that is at work that you can't see, that you need to see into the spirit realm through the spirit, the spirit discerning the spirits. You need to understand that we are living in a spiritual world and there is a, a demonic activity and parallel in history among the nations that the devil is taking over the world. We will go, we come, we come into that as it relates to the Olympics. What is the Olympics? What is the prophetic meaning of the Olympics? What is the secrets hidden in the Olympics? We're going to go through that so that you will see for yourself from a historical perspective and from a prophetic perspective that you may be equipped. The wise will understand because in prayer I began to receive downloads from the Holy Spirit to interpret to me what happened at the Olympics and what it means and to bring me back to the historical background of the Olympics. That is why it is extremely important for us to lay the foundation. What was the, the pale horse that we saw in the Olympics? Was just that just a coincidence or was it prophetic? I want to make it clear to you. That was the most prophetic event in our modern times. It was a defining moment in the history of mankind. And I want you to know that the puzzle has been opened. That the evil spirits, the demonic spirits, the fallen angels, the principalities, whether you want to call them aliens, whatever you want to call them, they are fallen angels. They are active here on earth as it was in the days of Noah, as we will go through, and we'll show you how it relates to the Olympics. Now, I'm not against Olympics. I, I, I love the competition. I love the, 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 the exercise and the, the fun. And the, the, you know, I'm talking about the mystery behind the Olympics. I'm not talking about the Olympics as, a, as games, com competition, and you know, just the best coming to the, to the top. I, I'm not against that. I'm all for it. My kids my, and my grandkids are only in sports, and we, we are. 100% for sports. I'm talking about a mystery behind the Olympics. The spiritual dimension, not the physical. I'm not into the physicality of the Olympics. I'm into the spirituality that's behind the Olympics. Historically, what it is, what it represents. As God downloaded to me what it is and what it represents. Because... When the devil thought he could uh, make a mockery of my Lord, the spirit of the Lord came upon me. Holy indignation came upon me. And I went into prayer. And God began to open up and say, the horse that you saw, the pale horse, it's Revelation chapter 6, 7 and 8. The Olympics of 2024 was the releasing of the pale horse to begin to fulfill the biblical prophecy regarding the pale horse. The events that are before us, which is wars and rumors of wars. All that is coming, the economic collapse that's coming, the global instability, geopolitical collapse of the order that came out of the Second World War, that everything is moving towards disintegration. There is... There is a complete collapse of the economy, collapse of the social order. There is, there is a, a, an inversion of this demonic spirit of hostility because the devil hates mankind. He is the god of confusion. The, the scripture calls it the lawless one. The spirit of lawlessness has been unleashed on the earth as part of the release of this pale horse. That's why I want to go deeper into what the, this pale horse is how it relates to the Olympics, and from the beginning, we will go deeper and you will be able to see the spiritual dimension to what's going on. Revelation chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. And when he opened the fourth seal, that was the opening of the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth be saying, come and see. 
Now, there is nothing new under the sun. The spirits of the fourth, of the fourth horse, the pale horse, has been around. There were, from 2020, there's been an increase in this demonic satanic activity on the earth, the demonizing of cultures, the demonizing of the people of God, the attack on the people of God has been increasing because the devil knows that his time is short. So now we come specifically to this demonstration at the Olympics of the fourth horse, the pale horse, and what it represents. These are the things that we should expect from now on, from today. What should we expect to take place? The Olympics that took place during the month of mourning for the Jewish people. It ends on this Sunday. What time is it? It was a time of the demonic attack on the people of God. That's why it's, it's a period of mourning the destruction of the first temple, the second temple. It's a time of judgment, beginning with the day the spies came back with a bad report to Moses. God judged the children of Israel and gave them 40 years in the wilderness. This is the time right now when this event, the Olympics, took place. So there is a prophetic timing, not coincidence. Now there is a parallel. Because we are in a prophetic season. And now we can see from the timing of the event of this Olympics of 2024. And the events that are coming. The release of the fourth pale horse of the apocalypse is here now. Judgment is coming. Because that's what happened on the 9th of Ove. Which is... On Tuesday, the day of mourning, the day of judgment. The First World War began on that day. The Second World War began on that day. We can go on talking about the things that took place on this particular day, at this particular time, a time of judgment. Now, at the time of judgment, the pale horse was released. During the time of mourning, a time to weep, a time of fasting, according to the Jewish tradition. So we're now in a prophetic season, a time of judgment, prophetically for centuries. And on that very time of judgment, a pale horse is released. To announce the judgment that's coming, the imminent judgment that's coming, because now we are at the point of no return. A time of judgment has begun. Because we are living in a time of judgment, we need to understand fully what this event meant to us. Because it's going to impact every family. Every human being is going to be impacted. That's why I want to take you deeper into the origin of the Olympics and how it relates to the pale horse that we saw at the opening of the 2024 Olympics. First of all, the Olympics began in 776 BC. The very same time that the Davidic kingdom was divided. The very same time. A time of judgment. That's when the Olympics began Watch that time, because time is important in, in God. Because the temple of Zeus in Athens was built on a mountain called Koronos. The temple of Zeus was built on Mount Koronos. Koronos. What does Koronos mean? That's where we get the word chronology, meaning passage of time. So there, there, is a, there, there is this place, Mount Kronos, where the temple of Zeus was built. 
And at the bottom of the mountain are the, the 12 gods and their little worship places. And on top of the mountain is Zeus, who is believed to be the god of, or the father of the gods. He is the supreme god in Greek mytho mythology. So he is the focus of the Olympics. Because the, the word Olympia, we got to go back to what it means, the Olympia. Because that's the secret of what's happening. Mount Kronos, passage of time. Who sits on top of the passage of time, the mountain of the passage of time? Zeus. Who is Zeus? Who is, believe, is believed to be the supreme god or the father of the other 12 gods. That makes up the, the Olympia. Now, in order to understand fully what that means, we have to go back to the origin of the Olympia in Babylon. The word Olympia simply means the 12 gods that rule together with Zeus. Zeus has got many names, but is the same demonic principality, the, the devil himself. So the first Antichrist, Nimrod, is the one that introduced the worship of the Olympia, which is, which does, what does it mean? It means the 12 gods. And each god was given 30 days. That's why we have 30 day month. And we have 12 months. That means every god was given a month. And all the names of our, our year, of the year, all the names of each month is the name of a god. So there were 12 gods and they were each given a month to be worshipped. That's how we get 12 months in a year. To worship what? the Olympia. So this is the origin of the Olympia in Babylon with Nimrod at the top and the, these 12 gods were the Ananuki, the Ananaki, the Ananaki were the fallen angels that were part of Nimrod. So they, they were the ones that were teaching people the worship of Satan. Basically, is satanic worship. Twelve gods, twelve demonic principalities, the fallen council. This is a fallen council of the sons of God, the watchers. So these twelve watchers were in, manifesting themselves in Babylon, twelve of them, the Olympia. And the, the top god, which is Nimrod himself, is Zeus. So Zeus worship moved from Babylonia to Athens to Europe with the same 12 gods and Zeus sitting at the top with the most beautiful temple built for him in Athens, the Olympia. Now, they began to do these games, these sports, from the time of origin, the sports were for the worship of Zeus and the Olympia. It was an act of worship to Zeus. And the, the Olympia, which is the 12 demonic fallen angels, demons, who were worshipped each a month together with their Supreme God, Zeus, who sits on the top of Mount Coronos in Athens, 1776. The temple was built. And the people began to worship that ancient religion that goes back to Nimrod. Now, Nimrod introduced this religion and it began to be practiced in Athens Every four years, the people come and they would have these sports. And the sports, if you look at these sporting events, the origin of the sporting events 
was a funeral ritual in Greek myth mythology. A funeral worshipping of death, destruction. That is the background. I'm talking of the historical background of the Olympics. Where did the Olympics came from? What was it about? Who originated the Olympics? Including the every four years that were begun in 776 BC and continued every four years. And all the people that actually participated from that time, they were recorded. Those who won the games. So we have a very clear historical account of the Olympics as a global universal event of the worship of Zeus. Now, Nimrod wanted everyone to be tattooed with the name of their God. He wanted everyone to have a tattoo of their God. That was the beginning of the number of the beast, the ancient manifestation of the number of the beast was Nimrod demanding that every person be tattooed with their God because there were 12 gods, 12 plus 1, which is this at the top. And so you had to have a tattoo with your favorite God. If you don't have that, it was at the penalty of death. And that is why the people that did not submit to Nimrod began to flee away, leaving the societies, going into hiding, and they became known as the Hebrews. Hebrews, meaning those who rejected to be tattooed and to worship the Olympia. They're the ones that started going and worshiping God. We get people like, like Job. We get people like Jethro, the, the father-in-law of Moses. Those were not Israelites. They're not Jews. These were Hebrews. They were the people that continued to worship the God of Noah. They, 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 they hung on to the God of the Bible, the true God. That was before, the, before Abraham. That was before Jacob and uh, the Jews. This is the original people of God, the Hebrews. They were fleeing Nimrod, who wanted to tattoo them, to make them creatures, to creature them, and to make them uh, slaves to the 12 gods and to the Olympia. So we, we see the beginning of the persecution of the people of God by the devil. So we see now, Abraham fleeing from Nimrod, from being tattooed. God said, come out, go, run. I'll show you a place and I'll hide you there. Because they were looking for him because they knew he was not tattooed with one of the members of the Olympia. He was breaking away from the Olympia, from this demonic, satanic worship or Samarasis, Nimrod, Zeus, the worship of the sun god. All the whole issue of um, the mother and child that we see in Christianity, that was all Nimrod and his mother, all that satanic cult came out of Babylon because Nimrod said he was the savior. He was the seed of the woman that had come to deliver mankind. So he took the prophecy that the mankind was waiting for and said he was the Messiah and they were to worship him just like the Antichrist is going to do. Exactly. It's a repeat of Nimrod. And we'll find out how the Olympia that began in Babylon with Nimrod, how it's going to dominate in these last days. The gods, the ancient gods are coming back and their domination of society has begun and the disintegration of the church has begun. The persecution of the church. 
The falling away of the church has begun because now we're coming to a time of the Hebrew. The Hebrews being the remnant that fears the Lord and that flees and will talk about how they survived being hunted to be killed for not taking the number or the tattoo that Nimrod, by law, said nobody could exist without being tattooed. And these men and women who were not tattooed went with God. That is why Nimrod came in search of Abraham. Because he knew he was not tattooed with five kings. You got to go back to Genesis. Genesis 14. You find the story of how Nimrod and the, 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 the other five kings. The, the, the five kings came in search of Abraham. And they couldn't find him. They found Lot. His nephew. And they took his nephew with them. Now. The story begins right here. Let me read it from Genesis 14, verse 12 and 13. And they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. And they came, one that had escaped, uh, and told Abraham, the Hebrew, and told Abraham, the what? The Hebrew. This is the first time the name Hebrew is introduced. He was not an Israelite, he was a Hebrew. The fear of the man that feared God, a wanderer who, did, who ran away from organized society in order to walk with God. Come out of here, my people, be his separate. Abraham the Hebrew, who dwelt in the, in the plains of Mar. There we know Abraham is told. That's when he went after Nimrod and he was able, he, tradition tells us, ancient manuscripts tells us that it is Abraham who killed Nimrod because he was the anointed of the Lord, because he was not tattooed. He was a man after the heart of God. There's a warfare going on. The devil is looking for those who stand up to him. He's in pursuit of them to destroy them. We are in an all-out war right now against the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. We are the Hebrews of today. We have escaped. We are running away. We are fleeing with God like Abraham of old. Now, coming back to the Olympics. The Olympics continued. And what happened is a righteous emperor, emperor, sorry, Theodos, Theodos the first. He was a man of God. He banned the Olympics. He said the Olympics were a worship of Satan. Now that we are Christians, we don't need to worship the devil because the Olympics was a worship of Zeus. In the Olympia, he, he said, we now are a Christian people. We do not worship Zeus and we do not worship the Olympia. So he stopped the games because the games were for the worship of Zeus and the Olympia and the temple of Zeus in Athens. So emperor, as a man of God, Theodos, Theodos the first, he banned them. He said, no, we cannot worship God, Jesus Christ, and worship the Olympia and Zeus at the Zeus temple. We either worship God or we worship Zeus and the Olympia. We now have declared that this is a Christian kingdom. We are going to worship Jesus of Nazareth. He is now the, our God. That was the end of the Olympics in 395. So, from 395, they were in Olympics until, listen to me carefully here, because we're coming to our modern times. We're coming to where we are right now. 
in 1895, the Olympics were resurrected. 1895. That demonic principalities, the Olympia, the 12 fallen gods, and the devil himself sitting at the top that was all closed up in the temple of, of Dagon, the temple of Lucifer, was shut down. No more worship of Lucifer, but the worship of Jesus. And no more coming together to celebrate Lucifer and the Olympia. So Theodos the first banned the worship of Satan. Now in 1896, 1896, they went back to the Olympia, to the worship of the 12 gods and Lucifer, Zeus, the sun god, again were at Athens in 1896. Hear me. That was over 1,000 years of no Olympics. And then the portal to those demonic spirits that were bound by Theodos the first, the, the portal was opened again so that the, the Olympia, these demonic satanic principalities would return to demonize the world. So they returned and the work of demonizing the world began in 1914, the first world war. Never has there been a world war like it. That consumed 50 million people. The influenza in 1918. In 1930, the depression. In 1945, the second world war. Since the opening up of the Olympia, the, fl the floodgates of evil have been opened. The portal has been opened for the destruction of mankind. Because of the worship of Zeus, the sun god. Now, do people know this? No. Do they go to celebrate uh, Zeus? No. I'm talking about what's behind the, the whole spirit. The spirit behind it. The, the demonic activity behind the, the, this, the, the invisible forces at work. To use these events to actually begin to unleash their spirits among the nations as a prophetic act. That's why the Spirit of God began to interpret to me and show me that immediately after the, 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 the portal was opened, back at Athens, at the Olympia, the 12 gods, the sun god, the same ceremony, pagan ceremony that was burned by Theodos I, were opened, and once they were opened, the world has never been the same. The First World War, 1918, the stars fell from heaven. Rumors of wars and wars began. 1940, Second World War, six million Jews slaughtered. Over 70 to 80 million people dead. Because they, the, the, the time of judgment was unleashed. In other words, the four horses of the apocalypse were released. The first horse was the First World War. The second horse was the Second World War. The third horse was the, the Black Horse, Black Monday. 2008 and now the fourth horse the pale horse we saw it on the olympics at the opening of the olympics now we are with the fourth with, with, with the fourth horse what is the fourth horse going to do what is it that he's going to do because this is extremely important that we understand what is before us beginning this very week of Batishva by, by Tuesday when the 
Historically, the first temple was destroyed. The second temple was destroyed. Balkova revolt was destroyed. We could go through history and show all the judgment that came. The, sec the first world war and the second world war. Now we are at the threshold of the third world war. Could it be that every judgment, every war will start in earnest? On the day of morning, on the 9th of all, which is this week on Tuesday, at the end of the Olympics, the Olympia, Zeus sitting at the throne, worshipped through our, our sporting events. Could it be this is the beginning of the end of all things? That's what God was showing me, that great devastation and judgments, wars and rumors of wars, economic collapse, tsunamis, disintegration of societies, conflicts, demonstrations, lawlessness, sickness and diseases, but new pandemics of biblical proportion unleashed on the earth because the fourth horse has been released. And the, the scripture says clearly what's going to happen. We know what's going to happen. We know where we are now because now we are facing the fourth host. What is the, what is the things, what are the things that we should expect? Does the Bible tell us those things? Can we prepare for those things? How much time do we have? We are in the, we are in the happening right now. We are now in the happening. We are the threshold right now, right now, right now. As I'm standing here, we are the threshold of the nuclear holocaust. We are at the threshold of uh, pandemics of biblical proportion. We are at the threshold of social unrest we have never seen. Lawlessness we have never seen. Conflicts in nations we have never seen. Earthquakes that we have never seen. We are now at the beginning of the, beginning of the collapse of everything because the Olympia, the Olympia, the 12 gods and Zeus on the throne have unleashed their power to the nations of the world. To bring devastation and death as they did from the beginning in 1896 when they were released. There's never been peace again on the earth. And we're living now in the, the final horse has been released from the Olympia. The first one was released from the Olympia. And the first world war came. And from then the second horse, the third horse, now the fourth horse is here. We stand at the beginning of the greatest time in terms of the persecution of the saints, the isolation. There's just going to be a, 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 a spirit of, of anti-Christian hatred of the people of God, hatred of the scripture, because that's what Zeus is all about. That's what the Olympia is all about. Now, I'm not talking about the Olympics. I'm talking about the, the Olympia, the, the power that's behind, the ruling principalities and powers and rulers of darkness that are behind it, that are known as Olympia, where we get the word Olympics. Olympics being a manifestation of the activity in the world among men. Now we're in the midst of the, the greatest falling away of the body of Christ. People disillusioned, people discouraged, people giving up, everything that's shakeable is being shaken. The winds of changes are blowing across the world. The Middle East is about to explode. Ninth of Ove is here, the night of destruction. The time of sorrow has begun. What shall we do as the people of God? What does God want us to do? We will know the truth, the wise will understand. I am interpreting to you what's going on. I am revealing to you what's going on. That you may fall on your knees and cry unto God. Because the way out of this is the way up. Is to look to him, the author and the finisher of your faith. There is no other hiding place. He is the hiding place. Psalm 91. Under the shadow of the almighty. That's a place of hiding. Because everything that we, we have trusted in is going to fall apart. Everything that's not born of God will not be able to stand the onslaught of the enemy. There is, there is an inversion from the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. The portal of evil, the bottomless pit has been opened. And the, the false gods have come out. The ancient gods are back 
in society to demonize and to destroy mankind. They are in pursuit of the people of God, to discourage the people of God. That's why Jesus spoke about the falling away. He said, the love of many shall wax cold. And Paul says, the love of many shall wax cold. Jesus said the same thing, because these are the days when these things are going to happen. And that's why we, as the people of God, need to be equipped, informed, prepared. All the things that are taking place, I wrote a book, 2010, about the war in the Middle East, about Iran, about Russia, about everything that's taking place. Right here in this book, I tell you everything regarding everything that's taking place 10 years ago. Because everything is in Scripture. The players of tomorrow are in Scripture. The events of tomorrow are in Scripture. Profiles of the, of the Antichrist are in Scripture. Everything is already given to us in prophecy. Prophecy is for the preparation of the people of God to escape the onslaught of the enemy. That's why God has raised me up. I need your prayers. I need you to stand with me. I need you to support us so that we can take the gospel to the nations. We have a shortwave radio broadcasting station that takes the gospel to 1.6 billion households. I need you to stand with us to be able to pay for the electricity, to broadcast Christ crucified and him risen, the coming king of kings. If you believe in that, then it's time to stand with us. It doesn't take a lot of money. If all of you would give just $20, we'll be able to sustain this ministry. We need to accelerate because time is running out. There is a demonic onslaught right now. Very soon, it will be illegal to preach Christ crucified. It will be hate speech. It is time to realize that we are living in the last days and there is something that you can do. We have responsibility for our generation. To him much is given, much is required. I've given you the mystery of the Olympics, that this is the, the horse that you saw in the Olympics, in the opening ceremony, is the is a pale horse, and the pale horse is bringing destruction. As a matter of fact, I'll close by reading it again, that you may know that this is where we are, the destruction, the, the coming Nimrod system of biochipping the people of God, Forcing them to worship the, the Nimrod, the last Nimrod, the Antichrist, and the false prophet is all here. It's the Olympia. That's why there are ten kings. We can go deeper into that as we will go deeper into the principalities that have been unleashed on the earth right now. And the rising up of the, the Nephilim kingdom, the Nephilim rulership of the world. The taking over of mankind by the fallen angels and their seed, the seed of Satan. We'll talk deeper about how that's going to happen. Because we're in the days of the takedown of mankind by, as it was in the days of Noah, by the Nephilim. What are, who are the Nephilim? The Anunnaki. Who are the Anunnaki? Those are the ones that the spies, when they went to, to, to spy the land, they say we saw the children of the of Anakim, the Anakim, which were the sons of the giants, the descendants of foreign angels. Are they here? They are here. Is this the time for them to take over as it was in the days of Noah? Yes. Scriptures are being fulfilled. We are living in a prophetic time. We need to rise and shine for the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. And it says concerning what is before us. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. You saw it on television. And his name that said on him was death. And hell followed him. And powers given unto them to kill one-fourth of the world population. That's where we're going. A conflict that will kill many people. Pandemics that will kill many people. Economic problems, we're talking about global food shortages. We're talking about inflation, deflation, the very collapse of economies and nations, the darkest days in the history of mankind. But to those who know their God, they will do exploits. You have been pre-warned. 
this Olympic 2024 a warning to the nations of the world of the release of the Olympia, the demonic principalities that are going to take over the world, that are taking over the world. The chaos, the confusion, the bloodshed, the earthquakes, the financial collapse. All these things are here now. The Third World War, here and now. Batishba, the day of mourning, Tuesday, the 13th of August. These things are here and at the end of the Olympics that ran during the, the 30 days of the, of the time of mourning, these last two weeks, and now at the end of the Olympics, the day of mourning, the day of judgment, a time like no other time, a beginning of things that we have never seen before. Blessed are you who know the Lord, because those that know their God will do exploits. Time to, to press deeper into God. Time to pray more. Time to hear God more. I'm saying you can go deeper. You can go higher than you have ever gone. You can press much, much deeper because God's calling you to higher ground. There is a place of victory for you. There's a place of great blessings for you. The best of your years are before you. The best that you have, you have never even, can, you can't even think about it. What I have not seen, what you have not heard are the things that are waiting for you in this hour. The best of years are here during the worst of times. For those who know their God, they will do exploits. You say, but man of God, I, 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 I'm not prayed up. I'm not filled up. I don't know the Lord. I know of him, but I don't know him. He doesn't speak to me. He says, my ship hears my voice, but I don't hear his voice. Can you help me? Yes. I want you to just confess that to the Lord right now as I pray for you. That God will give you that joy, that peace. Give you that love, that first love that you had. Bring you back into that love affair that you need. Encounters with the, with the Holy Spirit. Where you will hear the voice of your beloved. That's my prayer for you right now. You have no time to delay. Now is the time to be about the Father's business. Now is the time to press deeper. It's soon be too late. You say, yes, I'm ready. All right, I want you to confess your sins as I pray for you right now. The blessings of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all those all over the world who are saying, God, I repent of my sins. I ask you to cleanse me. I ask you to wash me clean. I want you to fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit. Guide me and lead me. I surrender all to you, Lord. Be the Lord of my life from this day. Lead me now from victory to victory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Those of you who say, okay, man of God, I'm not born again. I'm religious. I have religion, but I don't have a relationship. I want to be in a relationship with Jesus. Pray after me. Father God, I thank you for giving us your son, Jesus. Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. Now, Lord Jesus, Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Forgive my sins and write my name in the book of life. From this day forth, I want to save you. Lead me now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Again, if you want, you can have this book. Anyone who sends a donation, $50 to be able to post this wherever you are, so that you can know events that are before you, events that are going to be happening, that you may be equipped and prepared. The chronogram will tell you everything that you need to know in this hour crisis. May the Lord bless you.